I hope you're enjoying your summer. Uh, we're trying to enjoy, enjoy our summer here at Hope Community Church. And we are also very much looking forward to the fall. Because in the fall, we are starting something new here at the church. Something that's going to start in September and take us all the way into May. We are doing a series on the life of Jesus Christ. We're going to be taking a look at the life of Jesus in mostly chronological order over the course of the most of next school year. That was probably a sloppy way to say it, but you get the idea, right? Most of next school year, <clears throat> taking a look at the life of Jesus in chronological order. And we're all very excited about that. In fact, yeah, we go. We got somebody applauding that. One person applauding Jesus in a church. Goodness gracious. <laughs> See, I guilted you into that. I guilted you into applause. I'm not above doing that. But we are excited about that. And we're all working on our invitation list, right? We're going to invite a bunch of people to join us to learn more about Jesus. What if you got a list of like 10, 20, 30, 100? You're going to invite people to learn about Jesus. You're going to invite people into this space. And some of those people are going to accept that invitation. You know, some might watch online, kind of get their toes wet a little bit. They might eventually come on in. But it's going to be great. We're going to see more people in this space next school year. So we have to prepare. And that's what we're doing over the summer. We have to prepare to see those new people. And so we need to make ourselves as a church more attractive. That's what we're doing this summer. We're making ourselves more attractive. Not physically more attractive because, let's face it, we're already very good looking. We're a good looking group, right? We got that end covered. We need to make ourselves spiritually more attractive because those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ we have this power we can attract people to our lives attract people to our church and then attract people to Jesus that's what it's all about the converse is also true we can repel people from our lives with ugly behaviors ugly attitudes we can repel people away from our church and consequently we can end up repelling people away from Jesus and that's the last thing we want to do as a church Today, we're going to talk about one of these ugly behaviors, one of these things that we need to stop doing as a church. We're going to talk about gossip today. Gossip is ugly. Gossip is nasty. And gossip is everywhere all around us. We need to talk about gossip. We need to stop it in its tracks. Several years ago when I was at Bible college, um, got to know a, a group of my fellow students fairly well. And in between classes, a group of us were talking. And one of the guys was speaking up. And he was sharing some concerns that he had about a friend of his. Uh, there was a friend of his that was going through um, some relationship drama, okay? Some relationship drama. And this friend of his had this pattern of, of dating the wrong people and having this relationship drama. And so this, this guy is just sharing a story. He's sharing concerns about his friend. I mean, that's how this conversation was packaged. He's sharing concerns about a friend. A friend who's going through a tough time. But the more this guy talked the less comfortable I became with this conversation. Because it started to sound a lot like gossip, and it started to feel a lot like gossip. And so eventually, eventually, I spoke up. And I said, um, <clears throat> do you think your friend would want you to be sharing all of this with us? And I did that thing, and I'm not trying to brag, but there is something I'm good at that's creating awkward moments, right? So I did that thing that I'm good at. It's my spiritual gift. I created enough awkwardness in that moment to shut down the conversation. And I know he wasn't trying to gossip. He was just sharing a concern. But that sharing of concern turned into gossip. I want to see a show of hands here this morning. How many people in this space right now, how many of you think gossip is a good idea? Please raise your hand. Okay, we've got one, two, three. For the people watching online, we have three people that think it's a good idea. No, I'm just kidding. No one thinks it's a good idea. It's a bad idea. Now, show of hands if you think gossip is a bad idea. Show of hands. Hey, look, it's everybody. Is it everybody? It's everybody, yeah. Gossip is a bad idea. We know this. It doesn't create any, it doesn't solve problems. It doesn't create solutions, right? It doesn't produce any good fruit. That's some Christian terminology. We get that from the New Testament, this idea of a, of a healthy tree producing healthy fruit. Gossip doesn't produce any good fruit. So why do we do it? Why do we human beings do it? Why do we gossip? Why do we Christians gossip? I'm going to say something to you this morning, and it's going to sound like an accusation, because it is an accusation. All of us have participated in gossip, every single one of us. Back in the day when I was at high school, Ridley High School, yes, thank, anybody else? Ridley graduate? Where are my Ridley graduates? All right. The polite raising of hands, right? Not hooting and hollering, a polite raising of the hands. That's us Ridley students, Yes. When I was at Ridley High School, I was in the, uh, I was in the drama group, and um, 
I was actually a member of the International Thespian Society. Thank you very much. Please hold your applause. Yes, yes. Wow, that is a lot of laughter. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. I know where we stand. But I was in the drama group, and would you be surprised to learn that there was drama in the drama group? <clears throat> now about that. Now listen, those of you who are in band or in one of the sports, like, I know there was dramas there, there as well, okay? There's drama in all these groups. Anytime you get a group of people together, especially teenagers, there's going to be some kind of drama. And so we were putting on our play, and there was a girl who wanted a specific part, and she didn't get that part. A lot of you know, you know what that story is like, right? Yeah? And so me, I'm Josh Schaefer. I'm a friend to everyone, right? I want to be everybody's buddy. And so I'm friends with the girl who didn't get the part, and I'm friends with the girl who did get the part. And I'm friends with the girl who didn't get the part. She's complaining about the girl who did get the part. Well, she doesn't deserve it. She only got the part because blah, 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 blah. And I'm friends with the girl over here that did get the part. Well, she's just bitter because blah, 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 blah. And I'm just a friend to everyone. At least that's what I thought. Well, all this drama backstage led to some problems on stage. And our director decided to solve this problem. And she decided to solve the problem by talking to me. You got it. You guessed it. And she explained something to me. She said, it takes two people to gossip. One, people, one person, one people. One person to speak the words, and another person to listen to the words. One person says the gossip, another person receives the gossip. And it was one of those moments in life, have you had a moment like this, where you feel like, well, wait a minute, I'm trying to do the right thing. Why are you giving me a hard time? But on the other hand, I'm like, oh, wait, you have a point. This is wrong. I shouldn't be entertaining it. I shouldn't be listening to it. It takes at least two people to gossip. Isn't that right? And we've all done it. You have at least heard gossip. You've at least received gossip. But chances are you've also spoken the words of gossip. You've been the one doing the gossip. And you weren't trying to. I mean, people of Hope Community Church, you weren't trying to gossip. You really weren't. And if you knew you were doing it, you wouldn't do it. I believe that, people of Hope. You wouldn't do it if you knew you were doing it, right? Nobody tries to gossip. Nobody wakes up in the morning, looks at the to-do list, say, okay, what is it? Uh, I've got to gossip between 9 and 10 a.m. Let me get that off. <laughs> Nobody does that. You don't have to try because it comes so naturally to us human beings. You don't have to try to gossip. You have to try not to. And so, yeah, you gossiped in your life, but you weren't trying to. You were just sharing concerns. You were just sharing concerns about a friend or a coworker. Maybe you were venting. We talked about venting last week, this whole idea. You just were frustrated with a person in your life, and you were just venting out that frustration. Where do we get this idea that it's okay to vent, right? You, but you weren't trying to gossip. You were just expressing frustration. You were just sharing concern. You were just venting. Or maybe you were just lifting up a prayer request. Ooh, man, that's the ugliest way that we Christians gossip. Well, I just want to lift up prayers for this friend because this friend's having a tough time keeping his job. And as a matter of fact, he lost his last job and his job before that. And, his job, and I don't know what this guy's problem is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are we praying here? Or are we talking smack? What are we doing? Because if we're talking smack, let me know and I'll excuse myself. I thought we were praying here. But we can so casually, so easily, so effortlessly just slip into gossip. And it's ugly. And it's repulsive. And friends, it's disrespectful. I mean, why? Oh, goodness, think about it. You're talking about someone who's not there to defend themselves. That's, that's so, and we do this with like our friends, our family members, our fellow church members. This is the ultimate disrespect. You're speaking about someone who's not there to give you their side or to tell you the other part of the story. It's disrespectful. That's why this sermon is called Gossip versus Respect. Because to gossip is to be disrespectful to somebody in your life. I think one of the problems that we have with gossip <clears throat> is that it's difficult to define. If we were able to define it, if we could identify it, we wouldn't do it. I think we'd be a lot better at stopping ourselves from listening to gossip or speaking words of gossip if we could identify it. So let's come up with a way to, to define gossip, what gossip is. I've thought about this a little bit, and I have a big, broad definition for us, right? And maybe it's not, like, technically according to Webster or, or Merriam-Webster. Is that the dictionary, Merriam-Webster? Maybe it's not technically the correct definition of gossip, but let's, for our purposes, let's have a big, broad definition of what it looks like to gossip, what it means to gossip. How about this? Gossip is speaking 
in a negative way about someone. How about that? Is that big enough? Is that broad enough? Or speaking in a negative way about someone. Now, we could say, well, it's speaking negatively about someone, but there's a difference between speaking negatively and speaking in a negative way. So you could say something that sounds like the words look positive, but you're actually saying it in a negative way. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I've got this friend, and he's just really into fitness. Ugh. And he's at the gym like every day. Ugh. Well, you look at that sentence on a piece of paper, you look at those couple sentences, okay, all the words are positive, but you're saying it in a negative way, speaking about someone in a negative way. If we identified that, if we defined gossip in that way, and we saw ourselves doing that, we'd stop. Oh, wait a minute. Here I am, and I'm speaking about someone in a negative way. Stop. Stop speaking those words and stop listening. The other problem we have with gossip is just how common it is. It's so common. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's in our schools, it's in our workplace, it's in our churches, which it should never be in our churches, goodness gracious. Are you kidding me? It should not be in our churches. We should not be speaking negatively about other people. It is the ultimate disrespect to speak about someone who's, like I said, they're not even there. They can't tell you their side. They can't tell you their end of it. It's an ugly, ugly thing. And you better believe that it repels it repulses people. I mean, think about this. Do you want to be around gossip? If the answer is yes, there's something wrong with you, okay? We don't want to be around it. It's unattractive. It's repulsive. So we need to stop doing it. You won't be surprised to learn that the Bible has quite a lot to say about gossip and the words that we use. And how dangerous our words can be and how important our words are and how important it is to be mindful of the words that we speak. And I'll let you know right now, that if you make your way through the Bible, Old Testament and New, that the Bible takes a strong stance against gossip. Of course it does. Take a look at this passage. It's in your bulletin today. Words written by the Apostle Paul. Brought into a group of Christians. And I mentioned this earlier, and I mean it. We could just read this passage. Here's our sermon from the day. Just do what Paul says, and let's be on our way. I mean, here it is. Do not let. And remember, he's writing to Christian people. Those of you who are Christians, we're supposed to be different from the rest of the world. Yeah, gossip's happening everywhere else, and it's happening in the workplace, and it's happening in our schools, and it happens on the news. I mean, how much of the news that we watch is actual facts, and how much is just gossip? I mean, it's happening all over. But we're supposed to be different, set apart, holy if you will. He says, for you guys who are Christians, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Did you hear that? Don't let any unwholesome, well, unwholesome, he's not saying gossip, he's saying unwholesome talk. Well, you better believe that gossip falls under the category of unwholesome. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. For those of us who are Christians, and listen, if you're listening this morning, if you're here this morning, you're not sure where you stand on all this Christianity stuff, this is just good advice for all human beings. When you're about to open up your mouth and talk about somebody else, you should be on high alert. I'm speaking right now about someone who's not here. I need to be on high alert, incredibly mindful that I'm talking about someone who's not here in this room. Be very, very careful about the words you speak. And here's something I think we should do. I think we should all err on the side of keeping our mouths shut, which is something I've always wanted to say in a sermon. Just keep your mouth shut, all right? Right? Didn't Jesus say that? Just keep your mouth shut. Not exactly, but I mean, that's the idea. His brother James talks about this, this whole thing with our tongues, and they, they could run amok, and they could ruin our lives, so be careful with your words. Let's err on the side of just keeping our mouths shut. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Oh, there's someone in your life, and they've got a need. You want to lift it up in a prayer. That's great. Lift it up in a, in a wonderful, positive, helpful way. Let's talk about this person's situation, not in a negative way. But let's see, what can we do to help? 
We're not here bashing. No, we're here lifting up. What can we do to help? What is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen? Did you catch that? It's supposed to benefit. Okay, you're talking about somebody in their situation because you're concerned. You're praying for them. And it's, it's positive talk. It's not negative talk. What can we do to help them in their needs? And the person who's listening, it actually benefits them as well. Like everybody's supposed to benefit. When we open our mouths, everyone should benefit. I mean, they're not always going to like what we have to say, but everyone should ultimately benefit. The people we're talking about and the people we're talking to. What if that was your goal? Every time I open my mouth, I want something good to come out, right? Something that's going to help the people I'm talking about and the people that I'm talking to. It should be benefit, a benefit to those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption because it grieves God's heart when he has to listen to us talking smack on each other speaking about each other in a negative way why are these why are my children talking bad about one another why are these members of the same household talking negatively about each other why are members of one church tearing down one another why is this happening it grieves God's heart don't do that. Don't grieve God's heart. 31. Get And here Paul's really, he hit something here. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice. Do you see what Paul is addressing now? He's not talking about the words that we speak. He's talking about the reason behind why we speak them. What's going on in your heart that is compelling you to speak those ugly words? That's compelling you to gossip. That's giving you that need to, quote, vent. What's going on in your heart that is leading to you speaking about other people in that negative way? Address that issue. Is there bitterness? Is there anger? Is there some kind of jealousy? Is there hurt feelings? What's going on in your own heart? Deal with that. Do you want that? Verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. And that's one of the, another one of these reasons why we gossip. And when we're angry at somebody, they've hurt our feelings, and we haven't forgiven them, so we're going to speak in a negative way about them. This person hurt me, so I'm going to trash them. No, 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 no. Forgive them. Well, they don't deserve forgiveness. Well, who said anything about deserve? No, just forgive them. Just as Jesus forgave you. It's not about what they deserve. It's about your own heart and what you need to do. Forgive as Christ. God forgave you. So I've come up something with you, friends. I've worked really hard on this, and I think you're going to love it. I've come up with a method for you, a teaching, if you will. If you follow this teaching, if you apply this method in your lives, you will never gossip about anyone else ever again. You will never speak the words of gossip. You will never listen to words of gossip. If you only follow this one simple method that, yes, I created, and it's, it's pretty genius, guys. It really is. Are you ready for this? Here's the method. Here's what you need to do. Treat other people the way that you want to be treated. Or I'll put it a different way. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Looks like some of you have caught me on this one. It's actually Jesus who came up with this method, okay? This is Jesus. It's not me. It's Jesus. Treat other people the way that you want to be treated. That is, that is the mic drop moment of this sermon. Like, that's it. Do you want people talking about you behind your back? I mean, unless they're talking about how wonderful and attractive you are, it's like, okay, well, go ahead, proceed, yeah? <laughs> but if they're talking about, like, your personal stuff and you're nah, talking negative, blah, 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 like, we don't, we don't want that. Do you want other people entertaining it, listening to it? I mean, that hurts. Enough of us in this room, if not, if not all of us, know what it's like to be gossiped about. Enough of us know what that's like. Word makes it back to us. What? He said what? She said what? You listened to what? You felt that pain, haven't you? Well, don't do it to other people. Treat them the way that you want to be treated. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Treat other people the way that you want to be treated. You want to be treated. I'll tell you how you want to be treated. You want to be treated with respect, don't you? 
So treat other people with respect. Don't gossip about them. Don't speak about them in a negative way. Don't give yourself excuses for why you're... No, don't, just don't do it. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. And so if you find yourself in a situation where you are on the receiving end of gossip, I'm going to give you permission to shut it down. Not only that, I'm going to beg you for your help in shutting it down. I'm implementing officially a no gossip policy at Hope Community Church. Zero tolerance policy. We don't do it. We don't stand for it. We won't listen to it. And so if you find yourself in a situation with a fellow church member or a family member or a member of your community or a coworker, and they start, bah, 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 you know gossip when you hear it. When they start in on that, here's what you can say. You know what? <clears throat> I'm not sure we should be having this conversation. Or you could say, you know that person you're talking about, would they be comfortable with you sharing this with me? I mean, I give you permission. Make things awkward if you have to, right? I mean, learn from my example. Make things awkward if you have to. Or just say, you know what, you're, you're talking to me about this situation, and I think you should really be talking to them about this situation. How about that? Have you heard this before? Instead of talking about people, talk to people. Instead of talking about someone, talk to that someone. What if we just did that? Right? See, that's more difficult to do. It's easy to talk about. It's more difficult to talk to. Let me give you an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. All right? My last church had a situation. Um, one of the guys who was in ministry, was leader in ministry, uh, we had an issue. We had a behavior kind of conduct thing that I had to address. And I said, listen, if this keeps happening, I'm going to have to ask you to step down from leadership. And I hate doing that. I mean, it's part of the job of being a pastor, but I hate doing that. I said, this guy's like, no, 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 it won't happen again. And Josh, thank you for talking to me, and thank you for giving me another chance, and I really appreciate it, and I get it. And he started crying. Oh, no, that wasn't, that was, that was that. <laughs> anyway. And like, we had a real hard, we had a come to Jesus meeting, and it went well. He's like, I got it, Josh, thank you. It won't happen again. And then it happened again. And now I'm angry. I'm like, dude, we talked about this, and I can't believe this guy. And now he's put me in this position, and I hate having to do this, and I'm all angry, and I'm sitting in my office, sitting behind my desk, fuming over the situation. And I know, in that moment, I know I can walk out the door, and I can walk down the hall, and I can knock on that next door, talk to one of my fellow pastors, and say, would you believe what this guy did to me? And I could have this conversation, I could vent, and I could let out all my anger and all my concern and all my frustration. And I could do it under the guise of, you know what, it's just pastor to pastor. We're just talking, right? We're just sharing, we're just collecting ideas or whatever it is. That would have been so easy to do. I'm sitting there behind that desk realizing that's not the right thing to do. I shouldn't talk about this person. I should do the right thing. Ugh. I should go talk to this person. And when you go and talk to the person, guess what? Nobody celebrates you. <laughs> nobody says, hey, well done. Nobody sees it. When you do the right thing, nobody sees it. Except for God. <laughs> Your Father, who is in heaven, sees it. He is greatly pleased. So don't talk about people. Talk to them. If you catch yourself, and like I said, you have permission. If you hear the words that sound like gossip, even if those words come from me. Hey, Josh, um... Are you gossiping right now? You are allowed to stop me. If you hear the words of gossip, stop them. I'm not comfortable with this. I feel like this is taking a wrong direction. This started as a, I'm, not, I'm not accusing you of trying to do anything wrong, but I feel like it's taking a turn, and now we're into gossip territory, and we should probably stop this conversation. You have permission to stop it. But if you catch yourself, if you catch yourself speaking the words of gossip, here's what you do. Three-step plan. Number one, stop. Number two, apologize. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. I didn't mean to say that. That's I need to have a conversation with him, not about him. I am so sorry. Number one, stop. Number two, apologize. Number three, do what Paul says. Take a look in your own heart. Take a look in your own life. Why are you speaking that way? What's going on inside of you that's, that's giving you that desire to speak negatively about somebody else? That's what we can do. So we're not going to listen to it, and we're not going to speak it. When we speak those negative words, when we give in to that gossip, it is ugly, it is repulsive, it pushes people away. But when we do just the opposite, when we follow Paul's instructions here, when we build one another up and celebrate one another 
and, and meet needs that we're able to meet. And when we're very careful about our words and when the words we speak are a benefit to those we're speaking about and a benefit to those that we're speaking to, wow, that is magnetic. To speak positively, to celebrate, to lift up, to elevate, to build one another up, that is incredibly attractive. And to speak like that will draw people into our lives, will draw people into our church, but most importantly, speaking like that will draw people to Jesus. Amen.